All right, so let's get this done before the sun gets down. It's been super busy on a Sunday. This is a couple of little pads that I poured. You can see the finish on this one was mine. And then my buddy Pat came over and did this one. So yeah, obviously I'm not a concrete finisher. So uh, he did a little bit of that uh, in his past. But uh, this was like the, I really wanted to just melt down a lot of the scrap that we have. And so I had set up a, um, an old propane tank that we used as a, a blower. You put a fan down there and then you bleed in through the top, you bleed in some oil and it creates basically a blowtorch. Uh, and you can watch uh, Oil Burner's channel. I'm not sure if he's in New Zealand or in Australia, but he's a funny guy and uh, I, I like to watch his videos. I, I gotta check to see if he's done any recently. So, but um, I had lined the back of this with a, uh, a concrete mix that is sort of fire resistant. Um, but uh, again, this, I, this is just a side project that, you know, when I had more time, I don't have any more time anymore. So, um, but, um, and I put the, these in for bricks around for safety and all that bullshit. But um, the idea that I had was to actually set up probably right next door, um, an incinerator. So one of the things that we noticed here in the Phoenix area is that there's a lot of wooden pallets that aren't getting picked up. Usually they're picked up by uh, uh, the Mexican dudes, um, you know, they have like a little <laughs> Mazda B2000 from 1994 and uh, it'll be 20 pallets tall with a strap over the top. And uh, you know, they were getting like five or 10 bucks for the really good ones, but um, there used to be, I think two processing places here in the valley, but both of the, the one I know over on 51st Avenue got displaced by housing. So housing is much more valuable than processing pallets. And so they don't even process them anymore. And you, you know, you can turn that wood into uh, OSB, uh, wood pellets for stoves, um, just use it for firewood, all kinds of other wood products, including MDF. Um, but um, one of the things that we saw was that um, you could actually make an incinerator to burn your trash and uh, also to burn the, the pallets for fuel to create electricity. So one of the things that we wanted to build was just using red brick. That's what most people make their, um, uh, it's not a furnace, what is it? An, uh, not an incinerator, foundry. So we didn't really wanna make a foundry. We, just, we, we wanted something that we could line the inside with like black pipe and then you insulate the black pipe slightly, not a lot. You just don't want it exposed to really high temperature and also the uh, the oxygen that moves through there. So that way the, the pipe lasts a lot longer. Um, but basically to uh, boil water, uh, also purify it and use that as uh, steam to then uh, run uh, alternators. We didn't even want to run generators. We wanted to run alternators and then that would be backed up over there on the other side of that wall uh, would be a huge battery bank inside um, that we'd use as basically a, a really poor man's Tesla wall so you can we get uh, you can get like lead acid batteries for anywhere from twenty five to forty five dollars, which is for which when you're looking at uh, power densities, that's a really good deal. Um, does it take up a lot of space? Yeah, but if you have a lot of real estate, it doesn't really matter, so it's not a big deal. So, but anyways, we wanted to. The, one of the problems is um, fumes, uh, right? The smoke, and so the way that we were going to deal with the smoke was have a big overhead uh, that sucks it up, and then we were going to use fifty five gallon barrels as smokestack. It was going to go up and then over uh, in this area. And uh, then what you do is you scrub it. And the way that you scrub it is you have um, simulated rain, which is just spraying water on the smoke. And then it, it captures it. It knocks it down drop by drop uh, until it gets to the end. So it was going to come across here. We weren't even going to pin it against the wall. We were just going to put it up on stilts. And then this area I wanted to put like a... Uh, like a 16 foot uh, hamster wheel uh, that I could use in the morning. Uh, I wanted to elevate it a little bit so I could look into the park. Um, and then what you, the other way to capture uh, energy is actually through compressed air. And so I thought the hamster wheel would be good to run uh, one or two alternators uh, to charge the battery bank on the other side of this wall. Um, and then also you could use it to charge uh, the compressor in the morning because I don't like to leave the compressor on overnight, otherwise it just cycles and cycles. And so we, I'd actually add a few more tanks because you can get, pick up the tanks for like next to nothing. And so you just use extra storage tanks. And there's a whole, uh, there's a great video. I'll put the link to it about um, 
energy storage uh, per, what is it? It's like, I guess, kilowatt hour per dollar. Um, it's actually cheaper to use compressed air than it is to use batteries. And so I'll, I'll, I'll post a link on that too. But um, so the, the hamster wheel, that would be a fun project, fun video. Uh, and I, I still, if I have the time and the money, I, I would love to do that. And uh, uh, if I do, I will do it. But uh, as far as the, uh, the smoke goes, the smoke would end up coming this way. And again, you just build the smokestack, a horizontal smokestack uh, out of uh, 55 gallon barrels, which you can pick up for about $5 each. And you just weld them together. And then you put a little sprayer in the top. Now, uh, the property that I'm on comes with this easement that goes all the way to the street. And so I was gonna have the barrels go all the way down and then drop and then come all the way back. Now, what you're gonna end up with is a lot of water inside that. And the water pumps would actually be powered solar. That way it's a non, you don't even have to calculate it into your consumption. It would just be a passive setup. And then, um, you know, cause you gotta do something with that solar energy as well. And you wanna know how much, what your efficiency is. It's just helpful, it's not a, a big thing. So, and then this way, the, uh, the water would end up actually going uh, here. We wanted to line this with concrete. Uh, dig it out a little bit and then line it with concrete. One thing it, it does catch is a lot of water when it rains And so this whole area would be lined with concrete and it would be probably about a foot deep with water and then uh, Two ways for cooling on that is you actually you can actually have uh, an enclosed system in here That uh, has boards and then it drops water and then the cool water sends up ends up in the, the bottom and then you use that cool water to cool pipes and in industrial applications, they actually, that's how they cool down for air conditioners. That's a much more effective way than just convection, which is just air cooled. And so this is a huge, I think this is a hundred feet. So there's plenty of that. And then what we wanted was the excess water that runs off uh, would go into a retainment um, pool uh, on the other side. And we were also gonna dig a uh, loading dock. Uh, as well. So, but all those plans changed when uh, my previous landlord sold the property out from under me and took my deposit and said, This isn't your property to flip. I'm like, Oh, really, bitch? So, but uh, so yeah, it would come out this side because we're not really using this side. And then I, I also wanted to put a uh, sliding uh, wood fence here so that we could drive our um, golf cart into the park. So a lot of uh, houses on ravines and uh, basins like this will have a fence so they can just have nice access to the park. It, it adds a little value to the house and it's just nice. And so I don't have to drive the golf cart um, on the sidewalk there. I can just go straight into the neighborhood because that's where we run the dogs. And then uh, this over here would be um, trenched for uh, some of the water retention. And then I'd want to do a deep pool here uh, probably from about here over and what you do is you dig out the the shipping well loading dock right here for this bay so and i think it ends up being like four foot and so it's like if you're going to dig that out you might as well dig out the rest of it and basically it would be a a pool about 15 foot down and you line it with concrete and then uh it would also uh, you know this this lot actually needs to be graded uh to come in uh both sides and you'd, we'd put drainage down the center that would then lead into this as well. And then uh, that would be your uh, rain capture as well. And then, if it, of course, if it overflows, we can just run a pump out to the street. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I really want to uh, keep that um, the rainwater for plants. Uh, you know, if we want to run hydroponic, it doesn't have to be weed, but, you know, it can be vegetables. And there's actually a lot of good money, too, in uh, microgreens. Uh, but again, it requires a lot of people power. And it's not something I got right now. So, but uh, just having that much water around is, is nice. You know, you just got to, you know, take proper care of it and make sure it's not stagnant and all that kind of stuff. But um, so the uh, back here to the um, incinerator, of course, then you could burn your trash and, um, you know, plastics and all that kind of stuff. Mostly because, uh, you know, building speakers, is there's a lot of waste. You know, there's nothing you can do with an old cone and uh, an old gasket that you get. And so I thought, you know, what if we could burn tires? Because there was actually this property we were looking at uh, over in Phoenix. It was, it was, 
It's in a really shitty part of the neighborhood. It's like just south of Broadway. In fact, that part of that, <laughs> that uh, I forget which comedian he says. He says, like, if you ever find yourself in Martin Luther King Boulevard, he's like, eh, you might want to get out of there. Um, but uh, there's actually, this is, I mean, this is terrible, but uh, there's actually a part of Broadway that is named Martin Luther King Boulevard. And there's actually a neighborhood that the city planners named Harlem. And it was like, well, where do the black people need to be? Well, let's put them right there south of the river. Uh, but uh, and that's it, a horrible thing. But it, it was like, that's that's a real thing. You can look it up on the map. And um, but anyways, we found a property there that I really liked. It was actually two houses put together and it was on the end of a block. And uh, there was lots of just shit and garbage and uh, dead tires and all that kind of stuff laying around. And I thought, God, wouldn't it be great if I could use those tires to to generate power, right? Electricity. And then, I, you, you know, it gets into weird territory lines with the power company uh, if you want to cross the street, right? Because then you have to ask permission from the city and even the state uh, to distribute power. And they typically only give that to uh, monopolies, right? People that have already, you know, paved the way or bribed their way or whatever, however you want to call it. So I thought on a micro level, that would be great to have a generator at the end of the block and then you have, you know, like say 10 customers or 10, 10 to 12 customers, depending on how long the block is. And that's all we do. And, but, but that's a really great solution on a micro scale because, um, you know, you don't, it was the world think globally, act locally, that's hyper local. And so for those 12 customers, normally they would pay, you know, four to $600 a month in the, in uh, the summertime. And you could easily cut that in half. And then at the same time, you're also gathering the garbage and things like that uh, in the neighborhood and using them for full fuel. In fact, you're, you're, I wouldn't, I would never buy them. So, but the idea that we had was basically if we can use that to generate electricity and store batteries um, and capture the smoke and the carbon, the carbon you can actually use to make supercapacitors. Uh, in fact, there's a, um, uh, I think he took some of the videos down that were kind of, uh, what's the word? Um, they gave too many secrets away because he, he uh, his name is Robert Murray Smith. He's in the UK. And uh, he put together, he cobbled together a 60 kilofarad capacitor uh, at 12 volts. And so that's something that we would really be interested in. I, I bought some tools, but again, that was right around the time where uh, we lost control of the property and then it got sold and then the rent went up like a thousand a month and, and now I'm having to play catch up. So a lot of those things got pushed off and I probably won't be able to do them in this uh, area just because I'm, I'm out of money. I don't have the money, but, uh, so, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to his channel and you can study him and look at him, but, um, you can reuse the carbon for that. You can make regular carbon batteries. Um, you can make carbon products. You can, uh, sift it and grind it and, and make uh, micro, uh, fiber powder, which is basically graphene. Um, you can do all kinds of things with it. Um, but the, the biggest thing is that you're capturing it from the air, uh, so you're controlling it. But also, um, it, it, when you put it in a landfill, it doesn't do anything. It just rots. And if the landfill's not proper, then it just it seeps into the ground and it's terrible. You really need to burn this stuff in order to get rid of it. That's the only real way to get rid of plastic. Uh, that or find something to, to dissolve it in. You know, you can dissolve um, styrofoam into gasoline which is fine but what about you know like this high density stuff so this just ends up rotting um in the uv and so i would love to wait know a way to dissolve it if anybody can tell me that would be great because uh we got a shit ton of it that we need to get rid of and uh it just turns into really tiny um micro pieces and then it just kind of pollutes everything it just fucking sucks but um again the best way is to do this is to burn it and then capture the smoke and control the smoke because otherwise there's no downside to, to burning plastic. Um, when you're controlling all the vapors, you're controlling all the, the fumes and things like that. Um, it's actually the best way to dispose of the waste. In fact, I forget, I think it's Sweden. There's a video that I posted about it. Uh, again, I'll post that in the, the description as well, uh, that they actually import garbage because um, that was the only way to, to deal with it. Now, what they do is they actually use the excess heat, because what it does is it creates a lot of heat. And then they use that to distribute um, in the uh, uh, ground, uh, geothermal. Uh, they'll heat public ways, streets, and things like that. And that saves them tons of money in the wintertime. Instead of plowing, it just uh, it melts the, 
the the snow instead of having to plow it so but uh here it'd be a little different story because it's arizona but um one of the things that we had uh, dreamed about was that we could have a small fleet of basically garbage trucks um basically a regular pickup with a uh, ladder rack on top and uh, the driver would uh, live here in a small apartment and basically patrol the valley looking for pallets all kinds of uh, closeouts um you know shelving things like stuff that's just useful that we could use or we could resell um and then bring back here and, and either burn for scrap or pick up just basically a bunch of guys that do this as a hobby um and it and it really makes an impact on the environment it, it not, not i don't like to get on the you know like environmentalist tip like uh some people but uh there there is a great deal of responsibility i, I believe in being practical and having balance and uh, if you can be re as responsible as you can about it, that is great. But we have a big trash problem and throwing it in the land is not a great uh, fix uh, for that problem. Uh, there's a lot of downside to it. Um, but here in Phoenix, uh, the reservation is, you know, basically the, uh, the guys that control that land are bought and paid for. And so we have, you know, acres and acres and acres. Uh, I remember in... This was in 1992. Um, my teacher of the year, Mr. Snow, uh, teacher of the year for Phoenix, or Arizona, I should say. But um, he, you know, that was right when the green movement was kind of taken off. And somebody said, well, you know, what if the landfills get full? He's like, ha, ha, ha. There's, he goes, from here to Mexico, there's a lot of land that's not being used. So he says, you're talking about a thousand years, no problem. But, you know, again, the, the issue isn't, um, it, it, I, what I respected about his answer was that you have to be practical. It's real easy to sort of have wishful thinking and um, project your fears into, you know, like uh, uh, Juan C was telling me, he's like, well, why do you still eat meat? You know, that's bad for there. I'm like, well, the impact that would happen if I stopped eating meat is like nil, like nothing. It's like a fart in a dust storm. It's like, it doesn't matter. But picking up trash locally, and burning it for electricity, that is a huge impact. And that's something that you can actually do. And so I want uh, you guys to, you know, start doing projects like that. Uh, if you can uh, burn manure. And again, you, you want to capture the smoke. That's really the, the secret sauce of this thing. Anybody can burn shit and boil water and, and turn a um, either a turbine uh, for either for a generator or for an alternator. But... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll do I'll do the macho move like uh, car audio shops do, but if you're a real man, you'll capture that smoke and deal with it in a responsible way. So, but uh, anyways, this is the this is the project that I wanted to tell you about, and um, I think this can be employed uh, all over uh, America and other countries as a great way to deal with waste and be responsible, and basically just get free electricity too. That's always a great kicker. But uh, that's my video. If you have any feedback, please give it to me. Um, yes, that is a kiln. I picked it up for 50 bucks. That was another thing we wanted to do. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that was the other thing is that with, when you have electric, um, when the battery bank was to get full, typically what you can do is then you have a little bit of excess uh, that you can sort of, I don't want to say dispose of, but you can sort of use and still have enough electricity for your, uh, for your residents or whatever you're using the electricity for. And so whenever the battery bank would get full, that's when we would do an arc burn. And so we could uh, set up an arc furnace and that's when we could melt steel or uh, copper and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that we had for um, doing casting was uh, that thing. It's a it's an electric um, kiln uh, that you can use to melt uh, metals as well. But um, yeah, an arc furnace is really the way to go if you want to melt metals super efficient and uh you know it's all electric uh i'll post some cool links to that too um it's how they make diamonds and stuff now man-made you know stuff uh anyways i, I want to talk more about that but uh, thanks for watching and i love you guys i'll talk to you later